Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station. I'm Wesley from Google, joined by Martin to familiarize you with modernizing your apps on one of our serverless compute platforms. This time, our little friend Porter will take us on the final leg of our migration to cloud tasks, doing a mixture of optional migrations. More optional migrations, Wes? Uh, why are we even making this video then? <laughs> well, when modernizing your apps, there are going to be some steps which are less critical than others, but may be necessary at some point. So we're here to show our friends out there how to do them when the time comes. I suppose you're right. Um, how many of these optional migrations are we looking at, and what are they? Ah, glad you're a good sport. We're doing three migrations today, all optional but recommended. First, we're porting from Python 2 to 3. You probably should move to Python 3 since Python 2 has been sunset and that's where the community has moved to, right? I mean, honestly, this app is already compatible with both Python 2 and 3, so there's really not much work to be done here. Next, moving to Cloud Tasks is also pretty much a no-op, meaning you don't really need to change anything beyond the version numbers. However, this may be different in future versions. For now, it suffices to say that development on Cloud Tasks has froze for Python 2, hence why the client library is on version 1, whereas Python 3's is on version 2. Finally, we know from modules 2 and 3 that Cloud NDB is just a migration tool for Python 2 App Engine developers. From modules 6 and 10, we know that Cloud Firestore is the latest NoSQL database solution from Google Cloud. By going straight there, we get to jump over the Cloud Data Store migration. Moving directly to Firestore does require a completely different project, so this endeavor is optional, but more like building a prototype to see what these migrations entail and for you to consider before doing these to your own apps. Uh, OK, those all make sense. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these migrations. Uh, before we do the migration today, uh, can I get a quick review of how we got here? Yep, sure, Martin. Previously in Module 8, we migrated from App Engine task queues to Cloud Tasks. Because migrating to Cloud Firestore requires a brand new project, you should get more details from Module 6. Links to the videos and code labs are below so you can catch up as we're going to pick up where Module 8 left off and merge in part of that Module 6 migration. Sounds good, Wes. Uh, you know I'm here to learn all about the ways to modernize my apps and, and get hands-on experience doing so. Uh, can you point me to code as well as the code lab so I can do this migration on my own time after watching you? Of course, Martin. Same drill as before for all of you. Use your Module 8 solution or clone the repo or download the zip file if you don't have it. We'll start with the Module 8 code and finish with what's in the Module 9 repo folder. Links to the repo and code lab are down below, so pause here if you need to go get anything. Ready? Let's dive into these migrations. Since we're doing several migrations with a bunch of code changes, you have to confirm you're starting with a working Module 8 code, whether yours or ours. If you're on Python 2, double check your lib folder or blow it away and run the pip install command to reinstall those third party packages into the lib folder. Then use gcloud app deploy and confirm your app engine app outputs the same most recent visit list and possibly older visits to delete with a push task. Now, if things look good, copy the entire folder as we're going to make major changes to it as we will deploy it to a completely different project. First up, app.yaml, where modern app engine doesn't require much. For simple apps like this one, the most critical part is switching from Python 2 to 3, and as a result, moving from the first generation to second generation service. One big change is that web frameworks must do their own routing. This means that all app handlers have to switch to auto. But if everything is auto, you really don't need them at all, especially since the framework does it. So yes, you can remove all app handlers like what we did. But if you've got static files, leave them here because that does not go through the framework. Next, the section for built-in third-party libraries is no longer needed. They now go into requirements.txt. Similarly, there's no more copying or self-bundling of non-built-in libraries. You just put them into requirements.txt and that's it. This is covered in a bit more detail in the Module 2 video link below. For our simple app, the net result is that you can delete all lines except for the runtime where we're sending it to Python 3.8 here. Since all third-party management is in requirements.txt, that means no more app engine config file, so delete that too. For requirements.txt, we know that all third-party packages go in here now. Version numbers do need a bump because every library has a final version that works on Python 2. For us, this was Cloud Tasks 1.5. Today, the version for Python 3 is 2.3, but that too will change. Similarly, we're switching from CloudNDB to Cloud Firestore, so this line has to be completely swapped. 
In Python 2, we self-bundle third-party libraries with pip install. But in Python 3, don't do that. Seriously, Google takes care of this when deploying, so you don't have to lift a finger. Are we liking Python 3 yet? Anyway, that's it for the config files. Let's turn to the real work, and that's in main.py. At the top, there are two changes. One is that logging in Python 3 is easier. You don't need to use Python logging, just print a standard out, so remove that import. Next, we're switching from CloudNDB to Cloud Firestore, so swap that client library import. Finally, instantiate the correct API clients. Next, all of the constants for task queues stay the same, but we have to add a new one. The queue path variable is the fully qualified queue path name. One difference between App Engine task queues and cloud tasks we didn't cover last time in Module 8 is that when using App Engine push queues, the default queue was automatically created by App Engine, but that's not the case with cloud tasks, which is independent of App Engine. With cloud tasks, you need to create all of your push queues, including the default queue if you want one. And to do so, you need the path name up to, but not including the queue name. So that's what the path prefix is. For store visit, the changes you see are the differences between Cloud NDB and Cloud Firestore. Cloud Firestore doesn't have a data model, nor does it require context managers and with statements. In NDB, we refer to data records as entities of a certain kind, while Firestore has documents belonging to collections. Regardless of all this, know that store visit has one job. It creates a new data record with the connecting client IP as well as their web client or user agent. One last note, NDB automatically adds a timestamp when an object is created, but it must be done explicitly in Firestore. Since App Engine task queues create a default queue by default, we didn't need a function like create queue if in our module 8 main.py. Before creating a task, this function is used to check if we need to create the queue, which is only done if it doesn't already exist. Next is fetch visits. At the top, querying for the most recent visits has to change from Cloud NDB to Cloud Firestore. Again, the functionality is identical. The differences are just between how NDB does it versus Firestore. For the next section, fortunately, Cloud Tasks doesn't change between version 1 and version 2 of the client library, so no real updates to your code are needed as to how the task is created. Now, the logging call is a change to print and we have to add that check to make sure the queue exists before adding the task. Now, you may ask why we didn't do this before with Cloud Tasks in Module 8, and again, it's because the Module 7 code used App Engine task queues where the default queue was automatically created. Now, it wasn't until this app where we had to use Cloud Firestore requiring us to create a completely brand new project that we discovered that we had to make our own default queue. Let's skip over this new function delete docs for just a moment and dive into the trim task handler. We saw just a moment ago from fetch visits how querying is identical, but NDB and Firestore do it slightly differently. The same applies to this query looking for visits older than the oldest one shown. One subtle difference is that NDB has convenient batching, like a keys only query since I don't need to look at the data, plus a delete multi function for batch delete. In Firestore, you would issue a regular query, then loop through and delete them one at a time or use a batch delete. Since I want to log all the objects deleted, I move the deletion loop into delete docs, a generator that yields the ID for each document deleted so I can count how many were deleted and log that back in trim. Otherwise, I log that there weren't any old records to delete. The main get handler doesn't change at all, so we're skipping that. So overall, that was probably one of the more intense migrations so far in this series. If you look at you know, how much code was deleted, updated, or new code was added. Simple migrations are great for teaching, but generally not as realistic. So the goal was to try and make it more lifelike. We actually forgot one last migration of porting this app from Python 2 to 3. But don't worry, I'm not going to keep this video running too long. I deliberately crafted all of the sample apps to run on both Python 2 and 3 without any modifications or compatibility libraries, so the porting part is already done. Now that everyone's on Python 3, you've got no more pip install, so just run gcloud app deploy to confirm it works as advertised, making sure that you change to your new project before doing so. Because we're doing more migrations in this module, the chances of doing something wrong is higher. So let the logs help you, or you can check out our solution in the module nine repo folder to compare your answers with ours. All right, let's go back to the main presentation. Wow, lots of different migrations and things to consider. If I wanted to get more information about migrating my app engine app from Python two 
to 3, where should I look? Yeah, the best place is the Python 2 to 3 App Engine Migration Guide. It links to all the individual pages for migrating to Cloud Data Store, Cloud Tasks, and all the other standalone services. OK, and same for Cloud NDB and Cloud Firestore. I'd like to review both uh, to get a better idea of the differences between them. Uh, do you have any links for them? Yep, sure thing. While we don't have a formal Cloud NDB product page, nor an NDB to Firestore migration guide, your best resources are the client library docs for both, as well as the general Cloud Firestore docs. Ah, yeah, those look really useful. Uh, also, now that we're checking for and creating our own task queues, I need to read up on those. Gotcha. Well, all the links mentioned here, plus the Cloud Task Client Library and General Docs are down below for your reading pleasure. Great. Thanks for those, Wes. Are we doing any more task queue migrations? Uh, nope. Well, this is the last of the task queue miniseries. Summarizing today's adventure, we port our app from Python 2 to 3, we moved from Cloud NDB to Cloud Firestore, combining modules 3 and 6, and we revved up to the latest Cloud Task Client library, including adding new code to create the default queue. Something we didn't need before since we were still running on our original project where the App Engine Task Queue system automatically created that default queue. Cool. Uh, what other migrations should I consider for my App Engine app? Well, since we were already done Cloud NDB, Cloud Data Store, and Firestore, you're done with all the database stuff. Now, if you're thinking about containerizing your App Engine apps to run on Cloud Run, well, check out modules 4 and 5. Finally, if you've got a tiny app that's just one function or a giant app you want to break up into microservices, those sound like really good use cases for Cloud Functions, and that migration is covered in Module 11. There are other migrations coming, so look out for blog posts as well as checking the repo from time to time for more migration content. Thanks, Wes. I'll check those out. And thank all of you for sticking with us for all these different migrations. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we'll see you at the next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon.